This video is going to show you how to install Jelly Bean on your Sprint Galaxy Nexus LTE. Huge shout out to Shabby Penguin for putting this together for us. I think there's other people that are involved too, so shout outs to them as well and anybody that's working on the project with this and anybody else that's working on this project. Basically, we're going to click on this Galaxy Nexus RC1 and it wants us to download this. I'm going to save it to my desktop. If you're using Firefox, just click download or Internet Explorer or whatever. This is my preferred add-on that I use down the mall. Awesome. The download is complete. Uh, we weren't given an ND5, so I couldn't verify that. Then we're going to hook up the phone. You need to make sure that MTP is enabled. Then we should see Galaxy Nexus right here. Just take the zip and transfer it to the root directory of your Galaxy Nexus. Alright, that's done, so we're going to go ahead and eject the phone. Eject MTP. Alright, now we can disconnect the computer and switch over to my mm -hmm. camera. Alright, I've showed you guys before how to install something using Goo Manager. Basically, you just go to Flash ROMs, add zip for another location. If you didn't put it in your Goo Manager folder, and right here is the zip. It's selected, so you press order, flash selected. You would wipe, factory reset, and create a backup of your current ROM. Press flash, and then yes, and it'll reboot you into recovery. That's by far the easiest and self-automated way of doing this. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it manually since I haven't really done that before. I do not prefer this method at all because you've gotta wait for it to fully shut down and then you've got to hold volume up and down and power, so three buttons at the same time. And then press up, up, recovery, power. I don't like this because it's like each step you got to do manually and it takes time. All right, so first of all, we want to make sure we back up the current ROM that we're on. I'm just going to back up the three default things. I don't want it to skip and then swipe. You can leave the MD5 generation thing skipped, but I'm a huge like MD5 person. Basically what MD5 is, is it's a way of making sure that what you downloaded is exactly what you get, or what you backed up is exactly what you're restoring. So it's just a way of making sure that it's the same exact file that you want to have, basically. This process is going to take a while, so of course I'll be cutting it up and jumping from one part to the next. You might want to stay tuned till the end for some news. I can't wait to make this my device when my wife gets the SGS3. The only reason I'm not going to be using the SGS3 after I do my full review and have the phone for a week is because now that this device has jelly bean, I don't want to go back to ice cream sandwich. <laughs> I don't like downgrading and this battery will get you through a day and a half to two days of jelly bean usage. I has a lot of battery power. <laughs> Actually, I have another one of these too. So yeah, all I need now is a little charging base to put these batteries in and I'll never have to connect this thing to a charger again. All right, it is successful. You'll always want to make sure that that up there confirms it. Press back, back, and then we're going to need to wipe. You need to do this. Now, I see a lot of people do wipe after reset, cage, delvet cage, everything. Just a factory reset is all you really need. The reason for the case is because right now this is my wife's phone and she doesn't want to use a, a big hefty battery or a, anything like that. But I actually like going a day to two days without having to charge my phone. So we're going to go here to this new ACS Jelly Bean and then we're going to swipe. We've backed up our current ROM in case we ever want to go back to Ice Cream Sandwich. AOKP Build 40. And then we wiped it a factory reset so that nothing will conflict with what's going on right now. And now we're flashing the actual ROM. Alright, so successful. Basically, the whole time the clock was showing up. So that'll let you know how long this took. Alright, now we can just reboot the system. Let's see what kind of new boot animation we get. Awesome. That is different. All right, there we go. The first boot always takes the longest. <laughs> that looks pretty sweet. I like that. That's pretty cool. It picks up the 5 gigahertz network. I'm going to connect to the router next to me. 
data in root does work. This is a completely different. You've got settings, go to about phone, Android 4.1, and then you hold it. I have a lot of jelly beans. Hey, you can flick them out of the way. That's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. I believe the camera should work. And it does. What else is there? This is just a quick rundown. I don't know everything about this just yet. It's my first time using this ROM. Let's download Titania Backup real quick and see if this build has root. Alright, so this one does have root. You'll want to go here to the settings. What's this? Oh, that's a clear all button. Okay, that little button up there clears all your notifications. Developer options, turn that on, USB debugging, awesome. Now since any backup will work correctly. So since this does have root, this might also have data as well. It does have data, sweet. It does have data. We'll test it out real quick, we'll also download Clipper. No, she doesn't have Clipper. Screencast. See, look at that. I am using 3G to do this stuff right now, which 3G really sucks in my area. It's not a problem with the phone, because any and every single phone, that Sprint doesn't get service here. I have to step outside to make a phone call. It's terrible. I need to get an air rave thingy image. So yeah, obviously I'm gonna switch back to Wi-Fi because 3G is terrible. But again, that's not because of the phone or the ROM. It's just because I live partially underground. If I stepped outside, I would get full 3G service. Check out some of the widgets real quick. Take a clock. Awesome, so if you hover it above something, it actually pushes it out of the way. Again, this is not a full review. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here. I actually am gonna need some time to play with this, see what all is different and what all has changed. The email notifications are different too, but this phone is connected to my wife's email account and I'm not interested in sharing all of her emails with the world. So I'll definitely set up a test account and uh, do a thorough review of this letter. Whenever employee accounts are finally able to get the SGS3, I'm gonna actually be using this phone, rocking this extended battery by CDO and having their awesome case that I just did a video on yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool right there. This is completely different. Well, not completely, but very different. And I believe if you do that, it takes you to Google. As a lot of you may or may not know, I've been talking a lot about the Galaxy S3. From here on out, I'm calling it the SGS3, or simply the S3, which I stole from Flossie Carter. <laughs> Anyways, I was going to have it on the first. I truly was. I had the money, which I'm using my Evo 3D's upgrade because it's been a year and I got an upgrade every 12 months. Anyways, right now my truck is at the mechanics. My check engine light came on and my air stopped working correctly. It's, it's a long story. I don't necessarily care about air that much, but I have a five-year-old and I don't want her sweating when we go places and stuff. So I'm going to be putting a lot of money into getting my check engine like taken care of and getting the air to work again. It's it's not that big of an issue. Basically what's going on is the hoses that tell it to come out the dash or the frost or stuff like that, it's all screwed up. My air actually works, it just it's so badly screwed up that like sometimes half of what you'd normally get through the vents is coming out the defrost. So it's actually still works. I run the air when I'm driving and it feels better than the outside air when it's hundred degrees here in Missouri. Kansas City. And it's not all about having funds either because $200 isn't that big of a deal, but I'm fixing to be putting probably at least a couple hundred bucks in my truck today. Biggest issue right now is the fact that it's not available for employee accounts. I'm on an Advantage Club account 
If you don't know what that is, just Google it. There's a lot of resources. Anyways, my bill's $29.99 a month, and I'm basically branching off of an employee account. So it's ridiculously cheap, but I have to wait for the phone to become available to employees, which really sucks, because they don't have a date on when it'll become available. So you will see SGS3 videos. Trust me, you will. But unfortunately, it's going to take a few weeks, or however long. If Sprint wants to make employees wait six months for the phone to come out, I'll probably have to wait six months, because I spent 600 bucks to get you all Galaxy Nexus videos like this. 600 bucks because I didn't have an upgrade. Well, I don't have 600 bucks, and I won't have 600 bucks for a while. Some people are lucky enough to have subscribers that pretty much donate them a phone through tons of donations. But as of right now, SGS3 videos are being put off indefinitely because I don't have 600 bucks. I'm one person. I simply can't afford a new phone the day it comes out. It's just, it's not possible. I did it for the Sprint Galaxy Nexus. I did it for the HTC Evo 4 GLTE, which I use my stepdad's upgrade. Thank you very much for letting me do that. But SGS3 is being put off indefinitely. I cannot buy that phone by myself until Sprint releases it to employees. Once they do, then I can pay the 200 dollars and get it. Two hundred dollars isn't that much. But six hundred bucks? Ha! Huh. I can't do that by myself. There's just no way. But unless something crazy happens and I'm able to come up with six hundred bucks, it's just not gonna happen. This is what would Josh do and I'm finally signing off. Peace.